folks, welcome to Pulling the Strings Live. My name is Lauren, and today I am joined by a guest, Michael Lombardi. Michael, welcome to Pulling the Strings. Hi, thanks for having me. So happy to have you. Um, some brief, you know, background on all the things. I um, recently joined Puppet as the director of community and you and I met maybe like week one, week two and showed me around kind of the different things that you're in charge of responsible for. And it's a lot of cool stuff. Can you give us um, and our viewers a kind of summary of the things that you're working on here at Puppet? Yeah, sure. So I'm part of the infrastructure infrastructure automation content team. Um, you may have known us in the past as the modules team. Um, the infrastructure so remit, automation content team, right? Yep, IAC. Um, IAC. And hello, David. <clears throat> Thanks for joining us today. So happy to see you. Um, OK, the infrastructure automation content team. Cool. To yep. uh, viewers at home, what does that mean? <laughs> um, so what that means is that uh, our team is responsible um, broadly uh, for um, the content that makes Puppet useful to you, right? Um, if you want to manage Apache or if you want to manage uh, Windows Registry, any of those, that giant plethora of um, supported modules, that all is maintained, developed by our team um, with help from trusted contributors and uh, outside community folks, as well as other people at Puppet. Uh, we're just the ones that kind of uh, own the responsibility for them. As sure, well as everything the whole... as Jake might say. <laughs> yeah, for, for all of it. <laughs> um, A lot of responsibility. Bad. Yeah, uh, as well as the whole tool chain around what does it what does it mean to develop uh, and, and put forward a good puppet module? Um, what does that look like? What is the testing around that look like? Um, how should documentation work? All of the, cool. the, the stuff that makes it not just uh, like config files, but being able to treat your um, infrastructure config as code and the stuff that depends on it as code. Um, so we kind of own that whole long chain of stuff. Okay. Uh, which means lots and lots of different repositories. How many we're talking? Um, I don't remember the exact count for <laughs> supported modules, but I think it's <gasps> north of 50, south of 100, and then tools repositories is probably north of 10 to 20, somewhere in that range. So around Dang. 100 to 150 repos of stuff that we have to track uh, all the time. <laughs> That's um, a lot of responsibility. I think we have covered that, but okay, that is, that's awesome. And really um, cool stuff to be sharing here and publicly kind of being transparent, talking about it, uh, lifting the veil, if you will. But what are yeah. you, you specifically, um, you know, talking to us today about, but also like day to day wise thinking about what, what's your, what's in your orbit of things? Um, so some of the stuff that I've been kind of uh, into recently uh, has been working on the resource API, uh, which okay. kind of uh, is how you write um, uh, the, the stuff that makes it possible for you to write puppet resources, right? Types mm -hmm. and providers uh, in a way that doesn't make you want to tear your hair out. Um, so I've been poking at that a little bit, doing oh. general module tooling work, but specifically the project that I've had on my plate for the last year or so that we're hopefully, uh, well, not hopefully, we are on our way to uh, 1.0 uh, so that I can stop thinking about it nonstop, is um, our new approach to integrating Puppet with DSC, um, which is Microsoft's desired state configuration. It's You can mm -hmm. think of it as a, um, a platform tooling to be able to write um, uh, something that is analogous to Puppet resources in PowerShell um, that is consumable by all CM tools, uh, custom as well as the, the familiar ones if you're using Ansible, Salt, Chef, Puppet, um, mm -hmm. if you're using any tooling like that. Um, DSC is meant to be a layer that you don't have to rewrite all the resources for each of those specific implementations. You can cool. just reuse that. Okay, that uh, makes sense. 
Um, and so your goal, we're hoping to get that version out soon. And that's kind of what you're working on. And we're going to look at today. Oh, yeah, that's, look at our, our, that's a great choice for a beverage. Yes. <laughs> my go-to all the time. Uh, <laughs> Sounds delicious right now. I'm pouring I water. I keep them in business alone, I think. Um, <laughs> so, uh, we have had a DSC integration for as long as DSC has existed. Um, we've cool. just gone through phases of what that integration looks like. Um, All right. Trying to adapt to best practices each time. Um, okay. So I could talk about that a little bit before I jump into code. And yeah. I'll kind of talk about it while I jump through code as well. Sure. Um, so a uh, bit of background, uh, the, the, the former Windows team uh, at Puppet um, worked with Microsoft when DSC was coming out to make sure that we had a useful integration. Um, but that cool. first pass also meant that we had to uh, cater to the assumptions of that initial release of DSC, right? How sure. are DSC resources being um, written? How are they being used? How are they being deployed? We had to kind of uh, mm -hmm. tailor the solution to all of those things. Um, wow. And so what we had was this really great coupling between um, Puppet and all of the um, Microsoft supported DSC resources, um, but it had uh, some caveats to it. Um, the first was um, that because we were doing some Ruby magic to convert uh, the interfaces to those DSC resources into something that Puppet would understand, it was a little fragile and it was tightly coupled to how those resources were um, made available to the public. Um, and those things changed over time and it was very, very hard to keep up with um, how that process worked. So in theory, when we launched, you could use the same tooling that we did to turn any in-house DSC resources into your own Puppet module and then use those, right? And that's great, Sure. Um, except you couldn't build it on Windows, um, <laughs> which was a bit of a stickler for our Windows customers uh, and users. Um, and uh, it was fragile and it sort of relied on things working just as fingers crossed they had been working, which wasn't the case after a while. And so it became harder and harder to maintain and uh, there were limitations around what it could do. So we decided to come up with a second way, uh, a transitional way, which was DSC Lite. DSC oh. Lite said, I know we gave you a lot of helpers and guardrails and um, IntelliSense and autocomplete and, and catalog compilation help. We're taking all of that away for this, this iteration and DSC Lite is going to be the experts uh, interface to DSC. You will supply all of the information, get the resources to your nodes and everything's gonna work, but it's on you to make sure that it does because we can't really hold your hand here. Um, you're wandering off into the territory where dragons are, um, ah. which meant that it was wildly flexible, extremely useful, um, very low overhead uh, in terms of what you needed to deploy, but right. also shifted all that responsibility back to you. You need right. to figure out how to get the PowerShell modules that have the DSC resources to your nodes. You need to figure out what the right things to call are. You need to figure out um, the right way to, to put that into a puppet manifest. All of that moved from, from having help and guidance from Puppet to being something that you and your team were just now responsible for. For you to define and understand for yourself. Right, a lot of, okay. a lot uh, a lot more responsibility, a lot more um, upfront kind of learning and, and attention that you had to have, right? Okay, um, got it. And so- And that, that like implies fine. a particular user, right? Like that's someone yes. that, um, knows that they want it, first of all, like, you know, yep. can already understand that those parameters that they're living in. Yeah, you had to yeah. be an expert in DSC and Puppet, basically. So that's a much yeah. smaller group of people. Yikes. Okay, so I can understand why it exists. Um, and I put the link to it uh, in the chat. So if anyone wants to and feels like, oh, that's me, you're describing me when Michael's speaking, then check that out. Probably already have. But uh, <laughs> um, so then, okay, I didn't mean to in interrupt. I apologize. So no, this is now the next you're step fine. into it. Okay. Right. And so now we're on the third way, which is what's approaching 1.0. Um, right. So we said, what if we took all the lessons that we learned in those first two iterations mm -hmm. 
and and improved on them. Uh, and then James Pogren um, did a prototype to kind of see if what we wanted to do was possible. It turns out it is. Um, and so we have built a PowerShell module that can parse DSC resources and then turn those into the type definition for a puppet resource. Yeah. So it it'll just look at the DSC resource and say, oh, that's what this is in Puppet. And with that, okay. plus what you get from uh, VS Code's, uh, our, our Puppet extension in VS Code and, yeah. uh, and the language server and all that help, you now can just use IntelliSense to figure out everything when you're doing manifest authoring. And because we have that, that um, mapping between the, the DSC resource and the Puppet type, you now yeah. also get catalog compilation help. So if you specify an integer when it should be a string, before we try to run the code and it blows up in your face, we can tell oh, you, yeah. hey, you, you hey, hey. This, this is what it should be. Um, cool. Which which means largely what we've done is we've we've shifted left a lot of the problems that DSC Lite can run into during your development phase okay. into uh, an earlier stage. Before it tries to run code on the system, I can tell you if you made a mistake or not. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, at least in terms of what can be passed, that doesn't guarantee that the things you pass will actually work on the other end. That's kind of DSC's remit. Um, but it improved that. And then it added uh, two other very useful things that we didn't have with DSC Lite. The cool. first is we vendor the DSC resources again. So you're no longer responsible for shipping those to your node. You ship the puppet wow. module and everything you need is there. OK. Um, and that's great. And the second, and this is something that neither legacy DSC nor DSC Lite, or as far as I'm aware right now, any other implementation that uses DSC can give you uh, is property by property reporting. Um, so for people who've been using Puppet but not DSC, you're probably very used to uh, when you change um, something in your manifest, you update a, a setting for a, a resource, it says changed X to Y, right? Right. DSC doesn't have that under the hood. DSC's implementation huh. just tells you it's good or not, right? Is it in the desired state or not? And if it's not, then it says, okay, well, I'm just going to take the settings and apply them. And it doesn't mm -hmm. tell you there's there's no granularity of reporting there, which is is fine. That, that works. Um, but as a happy accident of our new approach with, with oh uh, the resource API types and providers and how everything just worked out, um, we ended up giving you change by change uh, property reporting. And so I'll show wow. that in the demo here in a little bit. I'll kind of show what the what the three iterations uh, would would give you. Um, but as I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, this whole thing depends on a PowerShell module to do the mapping, which means right. you can run this on any node. Uh, currently, the limitation is for Windows PowerShell, but that's because DSC resources don't. Um, uh, you can't map them uh, in PowerShell core currently, at least not to the standard that we need. Okay. Um, but yeah, so so that's uh, out. That's on the PowerShell gallery. It's just available, um, and it is under active maintenance and work on our side. And that's what's approaching 1.0. Okay, that's great. Um, and all right, so I, I fear I, I suppose like in the words of Aristotle, of tell them tell them what you told them, and then you know, or like tell them what you'll tell them, tell them, and then. Tell them what you told them. Tell them, what you told them. Yep. We've we've done tell tell them what you'll sh tell them. Should we show tell them? Yeah. Like should we show that? That's Do good. are we ready to demo it? I have lots of questions Absolutely. around the like how did how did you develop expertise in this particular area? But maybe we can chat about that as you're showing because yeah, um, sure. yeah. Just so curious about your own um, journey and the way of getting there. But yes, we can we can let's 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 pull up the screen. I'm gonna pull up. Um, Show at our what you have your screen your to share whatever I can't think of what that word is um, <laughs> but it's it's up um yep uh, and okay let's see let's let me know if that's big enough everyone but for now that should be good um all right so tell me what I'm looking at right now uh so what you're looking at here is you're looking at a very simple, uh, uh, as in small, not as in like easy to comprehend. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, Puppet manifest that uses um, the legacy DSC implementation, our first pass. 
So mm -hmm. what this manifest is going to do is it's going to, if I set it to present, apps, it won't do anything. If I set it to present, um, what this is going to do is it's going to create a new uh, TXT file with contents. Um, okay. Very straightforward. But uh, under the hood, what this is going to do is translate what you have as a puppet manifest into something that PowerShell DSC can understand. Right. Uh, and then change system state. So if we go and look at that real quick, if I okay. do puppet apply, and that was legacy. So if I go ahead and just run apply here. Yep. This is this is the information that we used to get back from Puppet um, okay. with that legacy implementation. And so one thing that okay. I want to call out when it gets there. And and for those watching, I also put the legacy link, legacy DSC into the chat right here. So go ahead and check that out if this is curious to you. Okay. So all it knew was that it created, which is fine when you're creating something, you can assume that something being created for the first time is being created with the settings that you gave it. That's you don't fair. necessarily need like explicit, like change reporting on, right. uh, I gave it content and all that. Right. Um, but here's here's where the, the problem lies with that. So if I go to updated test contents, right? I've changed the mm -hmm. DSC contents, what the content of the file is gonna be. Okay. Now when we run it again, Mm -hmm. What we're going to see is we're going to get the same created message. So that the change reporting here uh, is not going to be particularly useful. Um, right. If I see that. Yeah, why would I? I I'm like, yeah. yeah. I no longer know, did the file not exist at all? Uh, did it Did it exist in change? So the reporting um, that, that you get in right. that case is, is very limited. And when we go to remove it, um, it will tell us that it has been removed, which is useful. Hmm. But again, it's very limited. There's very little information that we can get out of this. Right. And you have the implied knowledge to know that those are the two updates that it can read and report on. But like, so, you know, I wouldn't assume that someone else would, yeah, maybe they would expect that the update would be there or whatever. And so, yeah, it's a really good shout. Okay. I see. Removed. Yeah. Got it. Um, so this is this this implementation uh, has been deprecated. DSC okay. Lite and our and our and our new uh, DSC implementations uh, supersede this entirely. Um, okay. But if we look so at, though I at put the legacy link, don't go to yes. it. Cool. Well, it'll tell you in big red letters <laughs> on the link. This is deprecated. You shouldn't use me. Um, but it's worth looking at. Uh, I think for historical purposes. Sure. Um, Thank you. <laughs> So if, if we look at the, the next iteration, we actually see yeah. something um, that looks very different, right? So so here we had DSC file, and then we had just a, a small set of keys sure. um, for, for properties. Yeah. When we move over to using DSC mm -hmm. Lite, you can see immediately now that you have some more stuff that you have to be responsible for. Yeah. Um, so it's That's a more nice. generic, uh, it's a more generic um, representation. Um, okay. But now you have to know what the resource name is under the hood. That's kind of implied. Uh, the resource name in the legacy one was file. But not only that, you also need to know the module that you want to use. Um, so mm. you have to specify both of those things. And if this module isn't installed to the default location, you need to specify the path to that module on the machine that's going to be looking for it. Right? That makes sense. Yeah. So very, very flexible, but mm -hmm. requires more of you. But the, yeah. the the more um, the more notable feature of this for me is instead of having a puppet property per DSC property, you now just have this properties hash. Okay. It does no validation of what you supply inside of this yeah, hash, I... other than that it's valid to pass to puppet, right? It's sure, like sure, it makes sure. sure that like, but you could you could put an integer, or you could put true, and it doesn't know the difference. It doesn't know if trusted is even a valid um, mm -hmm. option for installation policy. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's rough. So you won't find out until you run it whether or not you specified the right values, which means, I mean, during a, a dev cycle, that's not a huge deal. Oh. Um, it's just one of those things that everybody has to be mindful of when they're using it. And there's okay. not a lot of help that we can give you. Question along the lines of like usage of the light one in particular. Do we know much about how community members are like 
different ways that they're using it or um, like what that kind of looks like of how their mistakes they are making um, along the way or where, if, th if this is something that they're getting caught up in? Uh, I, I don't have any data to, to say one way or the other, like what the mistakes look like. But one of the things that we know is that um, DSC Lite has been historically used under two broad cases where it became necessary sure. for them to, to take it up. The first was okay. because the legacy DSC builder uh, was slow and fragile and, and took us a while to get new releases out and uh -huh. it vendored so many modules uh, at particular versions. If you needed a newer version of one of those modules and we didn't right. have a release, oh, you, get out. you were kind of stuck. You... So what you might yeah. do is use DSC Lite to get around that. I get it. Um, I got you. That makes sense. Or if you didn't want to deploy, because I think that one in included something like 60 or 70 vendored modules. If you didn't want to deploy 60 or 70 modules worth of vendored code to use a single resource. Then you could do you it would... one off. Right. That'd be uh -huh. a lot better. Uh, and then um, the other use case is if you had in, if you had written um, PowerShell DSC resources for your own organization and you wanted to leverage those, DSC oh. Lite didn't make you have to go through the build process. You just okay. deploy them the same way that you're deploying PowerShell modules already, and then you can use them in, inside of Puppet. Um, cool. So this this manifest is going to do two two things. The first is it's going to um, set the the trusted um, status, the installation policy of the public PowerShell gallery from untrusted to trusted. Okay. Uh, and then it's going to install a PowerShell module called Burnt Toast, and that's okay. that's all this is this is going to do here. Um, right. So Apologies, if I God. come back over here, I do Puppet Apply examples and then DSC Lite. Mm -hmm. And then run it. Let's see. And I'm imagining in your demo, all the variables are valid. Yes. Yeah. Maybe I didn't. I didn't. Oh, okay. Any, I was like, are we going to do groups. a demo of it flopping? Yeah. <laughs> I've I've uh, run through this code several times. So unless I uh, something magically goofed up uh, recently, we should be okay. Yeah. Um, so okay. here right. we can see we got we got yep. a um, a notification back where it says mm -hmm. we invoked and this is the hash um, of values that it had sent over. Right. right? That makes so, sense. And we see and installed. Yeah. Installed burnt. Yep. And so uh, very minimal uh, information that you're going to get back. Yeah, it seems pretty um, similar in the sense of the last one. Yeah, we can tell you what you invoked, and that's that's basically right. it, right? So so that's DSC Lite. And if we look now at what it looks like with the um, the new uh, uh, way of doing things, you notice this looks very yeah. similar to legacy DSC. That's yeah. on purpose. Um, yeah. when, when James did the prototype uh, and, and we picked it up, um, one of the things that we wanted was as smooth as possible a transition from legacy DSC to these new models. Yeah. Right? Um, so we maintained the, uh, the naming conventions where we prepend the resource with DSC underscore and same yeah. for the properties. Um, so this is the exact same as the DSC light one that we just saw. The only difference is we're now going to set it to untrusted and we're going to remove that resource, right? The, the module that we installed. Oh, sure, sure, sure. We're just, okay. We're undoing what we had just done. That's all. Okay. And so now if I do a bit of fly. Mm-hmm. Load the facts, do uh, catalog compilation, and then we'll get some different um, messages back uh, from Puppet than what we've been getting up to this point. Uh, okay. Arguably more useful. I think more useful. Well, let's see. Yeah. To, to tell me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> so the first one is for the um, PowerShell gallery, looking at the DSC installation policy. We can see that it changed trusted to untrusted. 
Okay. Right. So, so it shows you what it was, what it now is. Love that. Exactly. Okay, and cool. then here, same thing. We can show you that DNC, DSC and share changed present to absent. Right. And in the messaging, we tell you that we deleted it. Oh, sweet. And so, yep. So now you know exactly the, whereas before the creation and absent, right? Wouldn't it have been yep. in the old version? Correct. Okay, you, would, cool. you would just see some information about what was invoked because DSC Lite doesn't know because it doesn't it doesn't yeah. see what those properties are. It doesn't know if it's creating or removing. It's just it's always invoked. Sure. Okay. Um, which makes sense. Um, yeah. <laughs> so um, great. The next thing is we can do a little bit more of a complex uh, cool. example here. Um, so this complex example is going to install two Windows features. Okay. Uh, it's going to stop the default uh, website. One of the Windows features is turning on IIS, uh, the uh, web server for Windows. Um, okay. And then we're immediately going to turn off the default site. We don't we don't need it. Um, and then we're going to use a puppet resource, the file resource, okay. um, in order to deploy a, a file where we need it for the website. And then we're going to create a new website and have it use that file to serve um, yeah. some, some web. Right. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> so the first thing to do is um, we're going to look at what the uh, generating because I don't have those modules installed. If I do puppet okay. module list module path, we won't have X web administration or XPS desired state configuration, which can I, I know. The the we need. Can we? Can I see the code again? Did yeah. it know that there that we needed that? So uh, it doesn't because I authored this uh, off the machine. Um, okay. These these are these exist and are found in those uh, modules. Okay. I just happen to know for the purposes of this demo which two I need to. Sure, go. sure, sure. So would I be notified? Do, would I? How would I know if I didn't have that intel? You'll see a message like this if I do. Okay. But apply examples. Uh, what? Module path, Oops. modules. Hopefully, the red text isn't too hard to read when it pops up. Oh, evaluation so we get an evaluation error. error. Okay, there we go. Awesome. Unknown resource type. Um, Puppet doesn't have a way to tell you, uh, as far as I know, what modules on the forge this resource type could be found in. Um, oh, interesting. So in this case, I just I happen to know which ones we need. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to first uh, prove that this thing is all happening inside of PowerShell. If I do get command module uh, puppet DSC, we have a couple of commands. The only one that we're going to like really look at right now is new puppet DSC module. Okay, new puppet. Yeah, got it. All right. So what this is going to do. If I do new puppet DSC module, PowerShell module name, we'll do uh, XPS desired state configuration. And we'll set the uh, puppet module author to um, EDSC just temporarily. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and tell it. Actually, we don't need to set the author. It's just going to clutter up this bar. Uh, we're going to set the output directory to modules. So I'm going to have this new module built and put into the place that I'm already using as my module path. OK. Yeah. Um, so I have turned on verbose preference uh, for PowerShell. So for folks who don't know what that means, it's going to show us verbose messaging, um, whereas mm -hmm. by default, it wouldn't. So anything, any log that we see pop up uh, here in a second that has verbose in front of it, you wouldn't get if you didn't run with dash verbose. Okay. I just didn't want to specify it because the command line gets a little bit long. Um, yeah. So uh, I'm going to kind of explain what's happening here. So initializing the puppet module, this uses um, the PDK to create a brand new puppet module on your system. Um, oh. We have a prototype for using the new um, puppet content templates that I think James uh, demoed last week or the week yeah. before. Yeah. Time is circle. Um, <laughs> and so uh, the important thing to note is that we saw that uh, my screen sort of hung for quite a while on. Mm -hmm. Um, this piece, I mean, that's about 20 seconds. 
Um, sometimes, depending on system load, that can take up to 30 seconds to do the sure. initialization. With PCT, it dropped the build time for, for scaffolding out a module to under a second, something like half a second to two thirds of a second, I think, uh, each time, which is very fast uh, and will matter hugely. I'll come back to that when we talk about what happens after 1.0. Um, okay. But so the next step here is we're vendoring the DSC resources. Uh, so okay. what this tooling does is it reaches out to um, a PowerShell um, package repository and it grabs the module that you want to turn into a public module. Right? So you have a PowerShell module, you want yeah. to turn it into a public module and expose all the DSC resources as public resources. Okay. Um, it also, uh, in addition to that module, it will grab all of its dependencies and vendor those as well. So you don't have to worry about dependency conflicts and resolution and all oh. that. We figure it out, vendor everything for you all at once. We, um, oh, so nice. <laughs> trying, we're trying very hard. Um, <laughs> so after we vendor- come back inside now. Okay, and I'm with you. Come on, inside. In after we vendor- In all day. After we vendor the module that we actually want to um, wrap here, because it's a very yes. close one-to-one -one, um, sort of uh, comparison here, mm -hmm. we update the Puppet module's metadata. We insert some metadata that is related to um, the PowerShell module. So instead of you having to like manually be like, this is the module that manages the things that the PowerShell module, it just we, we pull all that information for you, and uh, it makes it very clear that this is a wrapper. Okay. Um, you can change these things afterwards if you want, but we give you all the defaults for like, well, if you if you if you're puppetizing yeah. the the um the PowerShell get one, it'll just take PowerShell gets uh information for what its description is and reuse that. Somebody else already wrote a good description. Why not use it? Um, yeah. And then um we do a little bit of uh, stuff that doesn't matter. We give each of these puppetized modules a default README, which we can look at. Um and then the change log for these puppet modules is mm. just the change log for the PowerShell module. Okay. Because the only thing that's changing inside of here that you care about when you go to when you go to the Forge module page and you look at mm -hmm. um, one of these DSC modules, you want to know what changed in the DSC resources you're about to use, not mm -hmm. whatever Puppet was doing on the back end. Like that doesn't you're not interested in. Um, you really care sure. about like what is the input, what is the code that's going to run things on my system about to do. How has that sure. changed and why do I care? Um, and then we do uh, some work to convert DSC resources into puppet types and providers, yeah. um, which is where the magic happens. That's a little bit out of scope, I think, for this conversation, but you can just see this long scrolling list of stuff that we changed. Okay. Just keep going. Scroll, scroll, scroll. We'll eventually end. Scroll. Maybe it'll end? Maybe. Stay tuned, folks. Oh, there it okay. is. <laughs> and then the last thing that we do is now that we've built the all the, the puppet types, we can generate the reference documentation from those types. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and run the same thing, but now for X Web Administration. And instead of watching that run, mm -hmm. like watching the paint dry, we will <laughs> just uh, go take a look. Web. Mm -hmm. uh, Administration. I can type. Okay, so while that runs, uh, we'll come back over here, and yep. I'll just briefly uh, kind of show you what got scaffolded. Okay. Cool. All right. So it looks just like any other puppet module. It's got all the same yeah. things that get scaffolded out because of the PDK. Um, the change log, as I mentioned before, this is the change log oh, cool. for the PowerShell module. And so it tells you all the things that have been changed, fixed, updated, et cetera. Awesome. Uh, and then the README, these are these are all um, generalized with a little bit of uh, specificity added to them. But this includes, um, how do I use one of these puppetized DSC modules? Um, rather than how do I use this, this specific, like, how do I use this resource? That lives in the reference docs, which we also have. Yeah. So here we tell you, like, well, if you want this thing to work at all, here are the requirements, here are the known mm -hmm. limitations, all that kind of stuff. Sure. Thanks. So let's see if yeah, let's go back. This is finished and it has. All right. Cool. 
So now I can do puppet apply again. Um, mm -hmm. And I've intentionally done something that's going to break. <clears throat> okay. Um, so there are two important things to notice uh, bef before um, we're able to move forward. Uh, uh -huh. The first is you cannot use legacy DSC and the new puppetized DSC modules side by side if they manage the same resources. That is a Puppet limitation. Puppet doesn't have namespacing of uh, resources by module. So if you have resource, if you have module foo with resource bar mm -hmm. and you have module bar with resource bar, it sees that there are two resources with the same name and goes, sure. I have no idea what you're doing here. How do I do, do yeah. this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, okay. so that breaks. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove legacy Except DSC because we don't need it anymore. It's gone. Okay. And now. And now when we run, we'll get a different set of errors. And these are expected. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll kind of, we'll, we'll look at, at what type of errors we're getting and why. Okay. Catalog compiled, that's a good sign. Uh, we want that to happen. It's a good first step. Okay. Oh. Okay. So we uh, we do some work to surface some useful errors to you if DSC gives okay. us useful errors. Um, so the first thing that we, we've done here is we found that the website resource is failing during the canonicalization stage, um, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, mm -hmm. We attempted to retrieve the resource from the system, and it said, I, I can't do this. Um, this dependency isn't installed. Well, that's the dependency that we're installing here. <laughs> so it can't find it because we haven't installed the web server. There's no web server to retrieve yet. Um, Got it. And so that's that's that, that first error that we see there. I see. Um, okay. It's the same for both websites. So that's expected and normal and fine. Um, as, yeah, maybe as not the best UX expected. from... Yeah, it's not the best UX from DSC's perspective, but not also a whole lot we can do about it. Um, right. We can't do a whole lot of custom handling of mm -hmm. DSC error codes yeah. because then our builder would be responsible for figuring out mm -hmm. what all of the possible handlings are for all of the possible. Oh, that makes DSC sense. Cases. Sure. So instead, we just we we take the error as descriptively as we can, how you got there, and we send that back to you and say, "Hey, this is what DSC said." Um, we're a translation layer. We're not, we're not changing any of the DSC code. Yeah, of course. Okay. okay. So uh, let's go through this log real quick. So we added the Windows feature for IIS. We changed apps at the present. And uh, we can see that was for the web server. And then we can see that we did the exact same thing for ASP.NET. We went ahead and uh, installed that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is something useful that uh, um, is something to be mindful of and is is neat, I think, about um, our, uh, our new implementation. So here okay. we're getting this warning. Puppet is telling us the provider return data that does not match the type schema for right. DSCX website default site. And so then it tells us where the value type mismatch happened. So the reason that we're seeing this is an unfortunate truth of DSC resources is that they are not always good at keeping to the API that they tell you they have. Um, so in this case, there is a mismatch between what DSC told us it has uh, and what it actually returns when you run it on Puppet. Um, we at Puppet can't really do anything about these mismatches. We have to trust right. the API they tell us they have. Um, yeah. But so we, we do our best to help you file an issue upstream and be like, hey, your API yeah. surface says X, it actually implements Y. Um, Yikes. And, and we have a way to kind of get around some of the problems that this costs, which I'll okay. also talk about a little bit in the okay. future. Um, okay. But then we can see uh, we changed some values. So the default um, uh, yeah, I see that. for the default physical path for the, for the site, the physical path for the default site changed from system drive to C because I, um, I didn't do it generalized enough. Mm -hmm. uh, um, manifest. We changed it from start to stop when we decided not to auto start it so that when you boot your server uh, next, it doesn't come back mm -hmm. and Puppet has to turn it off again, which would be frustrating. Um, and then we can see that we created a brand new website. And unlike with the old implementation, not only mm -hmm. do we know that it was created, 
we also know um, what we have uh, set everything to. So we set the site ID 87. We ensure that it's present. You we'll set log a of that, path. Sure. Okay. <laughs> All that information now is there, which means that cool. you have uh, a little bit better of an understanding. Yeah. And as uh, James pointed out in the chat, <clears throat> if I run this again, yeah. Well, that goes. Oh, here it is. Just that first time. Yes, because the, the dependencies weren't yeah, installed yet. Yeah, that makes sense. Now that we installed the, the dependencies, we should get no changes. We should just say, I compiled the catalog, I took a look at everything, and you're yeah. fine. Right. Except for that warning about, hey, it's, it's not listening to its own API. Which um, is still, yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's not great. Um, this does happen more than we would like. Um, so uh, I kind of want to talk. That's all I have for the demo. Um, yeah, no. I kind of want to talk about where we're heading uh, and what what things That's are kind what, of in the pipeline. Yeah, that was going to be my kind of, I guess, like next thing of last week. I asked James, like, give me a preview. What's next? Um, but yeah, I'm curious. Like, we, what are your next steps? What do you want? What are you excited to see change? Uh, what do you hear people saying that they want? All that sort of bit. Yep. Um, so uh, our ultimate goal right now, um, or our, our next major goal, is to do a 1.0.0 stable release in July. Okay. Um, and when? We have I, missed, some I think I spoke July. in July. 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 End of July. July. Yep. Yep. July. Okay. We have a new feature that we're really excited to land. Uh, and we're um, currently in a bit of a holding pattern because it depends on the latest versions, 6X and 7X of uh, Puppet for people to be able to use it. Um, but one of the problems that comes up from this warning uh, and, and from uh, the general problem of DSC resources not respecting their own API is that um, sometimes they're not identified um, because they don't return the correct values uh, for when you retrieve the, the information about them from the system. Um, right. Because they don't respect that API sufficiently, Puppet has to trust what, it, what it's told, right? We don't, we don't want it to make it up on the fly. Um, which means that you'll sometimes get um, stuff that flaps or it doesn't apply when it's supposed to. Um, and there's sort of like a, a, a value misbehavior there. Um, and so what we're implementing is a new flag on the DSC resources um, oh. called validation mode. Um, cool. <clears throat> so by default, the validation mode is property, which gives you that great property by property report. Right? Yeah. But that property by property report is only useful to you if DSC is reporting the correct state. Right, right, right. Yeah, of course. So we're adding an option for a validation mode called resource where we fall back on DSC's own underlying, am I in the desired state or not um, check. If so what, what we do, saw in the first time, or wait, in yeah, exactly. the light. In, yeah. In, in, yep, exactly. Oh, so, cool. so all it's gonna do is it's be really like, smart. well, DSC says it's in sync. We're going to trust DSC because you trusted it enough to make it set code on I your system. It. I got enough. it. Enough. Um, so you'll lose granularity in exchange for getting around that that issue with DSC. Yeah. Okay. Or declared cool. API services for DSC resources. So that's the that's the next major yeah. implementation thing we have on our uh, list. Everything else that we're doing in this next milestone is all around testing and stability and maintenance and making sure that that. Cool. You can have a lot of confidence and we can have a lot of confidence. Um, why is that so necessary? <clears throat> That's so necessary because the thing that we want to do at the end of the summer and uh, early fall is we mm -hmm. want to set up um, a, uh, a sort of scheduled automation where we will crawl the PowerShell gallery for modules that have DSC resources. Okay. And then... Every night, anything that has been released in the last 24 hours will show up on the Forge. Um, so any new modules, versions, any of those things will all just show up on the Forge. Um, and you don't have to think about it anymore. Instead of, like, the way that it currently works, because we don't have the automation set up, is if there's a version of a module that we have on the Forge that uh, doesn't have the version you want, you can message us and we'll go ahead and we'll do the manual thing to get it. Um, oh my gosh, it's going to be so different. Yeah, it'll be very fast. Uh, and so 
what does that mean for people who are managing um, Windows systems or Microsoft systems uh, with Puppet? Right, right. That means about 350, north of 350 additional Puppet modules, each with anywhere from like two to, you know, 100 resources, um, and all of the versions of each of those. Um, and we'll also be able to do a rebuild. So if we change something in that PowerShell wow. module, Chances are, if that PowerShell module gets another release, it's because we changed something in in the the definition of the the type how how we handle that. We did, we improved it some, which means you want a rebuild, right? Uh, and so um, we can also using that same automation trigger a rebuild of all the modules that are currently out, and then you can just increment your build. Right. Um, which leads me to a very short tangent, which is. The versioning of these modules on the Forge is pinned exactly mm -hmm. to the PowerShell module on the Gallon. So right. if the PowerShell module's version is 3000, some of them use four digits, then the Puppet module version is 3000. And then the very last digit is our building. So if we rebuild it, it goes from 30000 to 30001. Okay. Right. Um, and if we change our underlying, like, how are we, instead of what does the API surface look like, if we change the underlying implementation, how are we calling DSC? Mm -hmm. That's in a different module. So instead of having to deploy, redeploy 20 or 30 or 100 modules to your system, you just update one dependency on the PowerShell web, um, which we also have up on the Forge. Uh, and it's the same module that powers our IIS module, our PowerShell module. Um, anybody who's who's running a substantial amount of PowerShell code under the covers for Puppet yeah. is using that. Cool. So oh that's just sort of a shared library. Dang. Well, that is really exciting. So that that goal makes sense to me. Uh, and so working on boosting, <clears throat> as you said, stability, confidence, all of that. Um, yep. Is that kind of like that's the next steps um, and what folks yeah. can maybe get excited about in the future? That's a, a incredible kind of thing to look forward to. Yeah, we're very excited. Um, we have some longer distance horizon ideas around being able to support DSC and PowerShell seven uh, okay. or seven X um, because DSC as of this latest release of PowerShell. Uh, is theoretically cross-platform. There aren't many resources to take advantage of that, but once that is set in stone and like the the API contracts and everything is is more well understood and we can get things working, okay. we can support any any DSC resource that runs on any platform. We can support call. It's kind of where we want to get to. Uh, okay. So for right now, it's still limited to Windows because that's all that really works that I would trust on a production system at this time. Sure. Um, the support for DSC and PowerShell 7 is experimental and probably not a thing you should for your prod web farm, if I was uh, to guess. But you know. I mean, probably not. <laughs> Here be dragons. Uh, yeah, uh, as James pointed out, um, before we do that automation, where we're looking at building, you know, yeah. Uh, up to 350 modules a night, we're gonna switch from using uh, um, the current PDKs templating to the PCT templating. The PCT templating, right. And if you're curious to learn more about that, head over to our YouTube channel and you can see last week's <laughs> demo of that. Um, <laughs> right, no, 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 that, good Just, job though. <laughs> that's a 30X reduction in time. It takes it takes from thirty seconds per module to build right. down to under a second, it's which you know, when you when you're thinking about like oh well, thirty seconds that's not that much, and then you remember oh well it's thirty seconds times three hundred and fifty modules exactly. times however many exactly. versions we're rebuilding. Uh, I think we estimated it, it will save somewhere around like eight hundred and seventy hours on a rebuild of of I build mean, cycle time. Which is that's a nothing. great number. No, no, no. I'm like, that's a juicy number. I love it. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so fun. Wow, this has been so cool. Um, yeah, I feel like I have, thank you for taking me, I mean, selfishly through a deeper dive onto it because I have a better sense of it. Um, folks in the chat, appreciate you all. If you have any questions, of course, you can for sure ask Michael. 
Um, but it's really exciting to learn about it. And I hope people are as ex or, you know, enthusiastic as we are about what this might mean for folks in the future. But um, we, we have a, uh, uh, actually, before I forget, we have a, uh, yeah. a Slack, but you can also email DSC. Uh, yeah. Uh, and oh. then we'll get a hold of the team that's working. So. Okay, yeah, no, of course. I always want to make sure that we shout out. Let's see, I have a command for Slack. Um, feel free to come join us, ask your questions, all those sort of things right here. Um, yeah, so, so is that how you kind of collect feedback when folks, like when I was asking about the light and understanding what those problems are there, is that kind of where people, join ask questions and community slots and be like uh not yep. getting in the air handling on it or whatever yeah yeah so i'm actively watching the community slack for for dsc feedback and then dsc at, at puppet.com is a great way to uh get a hold of uh, the team in case i'm on pto if somebody needs to do a yeah. push of a module version for you <sighs> Well, James last week um, accidentally shared uh, with the community what um, search terms or keywords uh, he gets notified on <laughs> our Slack. If you want to share that, you know, save space. Yep. <laughs> no, I do. I, I do also have a watch for DSCs. I mentioned DSC in the, in the Slack. I should find it. Same for. Uh, <gasps> Um, Ruby PowerShell or PowerShell Lib, which is the two different names for the same library. One of them is the gem name, one of them is the puppet module name. So, for sure. <laughs> uh, no, it's great just to like, I think, spend some time really understand. Uh, what you're working on, the area of expertise, and to give a face to folks in our community that are like have building, having these questions in the weeds on it, and to know you. Um, so that they can, yeah, be like, Michael, I have so many more questions now. Let's dive into it. Uh, I think that that is an important piece for sure. Um, yeah, this is, this has been great. I really appreciate you kind of joining me today. And, you know, of course, folks, we'll be back next week to, um, continue exploring all the fun things that puppet community folks might be curious about. Um, but Michael, um, if, if there are, actually, I think I included a command resources. So if anyone is watching right now and wants to check, oh, it's a lot of text. This is going to cover our face. Oh, no. <laughs> That's pretty illegible. <laughs> that wasn't helpful at all, actually. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> my bad. I thought, yes, but um, the link that David shared is helpful also. So, yeah. Anyhow. Uh, but folks like yeah don't be hesitant or don't be a stranger to come out re ask questions um and otherwise i suppose this is where we'll leave you but thanks everyone for joining us this week really appreciate yeah and um michael really appreciate you for joining me today i had a blast um me too <laughs> i guess last last thing uh we have community days on my team um, so every Monday, my team have, makes ourselves available to the community for questions, and we review PRs and stuff. So if you if you're um, Love it. looking for some help, just drop in on Mondays uh, and ask us a question or whatever. We'll be around. Yeah, that's a great shout. I love that we do that. I think that that is really powerful, and just to have a whole day to like triage, make sense of things, understand what people are confused about, and then like set a plan. Brilliant. I mean, self selfishly, we've seen throughput go up. We've we've you know, really? we address yeah. more issues, merge more PRs, and nobody sits on triage for two weeks being miserable, which seems like a net good. Yeah. Only doing maintenance okay. work for two weeks is, is a bit of a bummer. Yeah, but the whole team doing it together on Mondays. Yeah, it's amazing. Plus, you have if if I don't know something, instead of like pulling somebody off a of feature work, we all have Monday dedicated to it. So exactly. Hey, I don't know what this is. Can you help? And then <laughs> yes, they can. Right. So, Everyone great. is default available then. Yeah. It's really brilliant. Yep. Wow. Well, um, folks, if you choose to adopt that on your team, please be sure to let us know because we think it works really well. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, I um, will let you go. But thank you everyone again for joining us today. And I will see you all soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.